Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this unit, we're going to address a different set of issues with X-bar theory that have to do with verbs that have more than one argument. Uh, so, for example, ditransitive verbs, which have three arguments. And if you only have a complement and a specifier position, what are we going to do with that um, third element in these structures? We're going to look at a collection of puzzles. Um, the first one we're going to look at is the double object ditransitive. These are sentences like Josh gave Clay a book, where um, we have three arguments, Josh, Clay, and a book, but it appears as if we might have two complements, and that's not permitted by X-bar theory. So let's uh, sort of uh, break that down. Uh, one of the things we can observe about these constructions is the second noun phrase behaves just like a complement. So one of the things we know about um, complements is you typically cannot stick an adverb in, in English between the verb and the complement. So if we have a verb like uh, love, we can't say Josh loves frequently clay. That's impossible because you, you, that would mean you would put an adjunct between a head and its complement. Well, the same thing seems to be true um, with a double object verb, where you have two noun phrase objects, you can't put carefully a, uh, an adverb between the first and the second um, argument, um, uh, in, internal arguments. So Josh gave Clay carefully a book is ungrammatical. You have to put the adverb at the end. So that suggests that Clay and a book are both complements, but our tree structure and our rules can't generate that. Um, so how are we going to fix that little problem? Well, um, one possibility is that X-bar theory is wrong, and what we should be doing is just literally putting them both in as complements, that is, daughter of a bar and sister to a head. Um, and then you would get a structure just like this one. And that would, um, we would have to revise our X bar rules. There's reasons to think that this is not the right solution, though. Um, first of all, it has ternary branching, and so it sort of violates the principles we've had up to now that have used um, X bar has been exclusively um, uh, binary branching. The second problem is has to do with the relationship between these two noun phrases. You'll notice if you look at this tree that the two noun phrases C command each other. Uh, remember, C command is the relationship of motherhood and sisterhood. So the DP, the book, C commands clay, and the DP clay, C commands the book. They are, they are literally sisters, so that means they symmetrically C command one another. So if we think about phenomena that make reference to C command, um, we might be able to see if this is, in fact, a, a valid representation. Um, here we have uh, two DPs, and um, let's ask the question, um, do they, in fact, C command each other? So one phenomenon we know that makes reference to C command is binding theory. So one prediction of this particular structure we have right here is that you should be able to have an anaphor in either of these two positions bound by the other one, uh, where the binder is C commanding the anaphor. So we should be able to put an anaphor in place of the book uh, and have it bound by this DP. And we should be able to have an anaphor in this first position that would be bound by the element in the second position. Um, let's see if that's true. Barson Lasnik um, in a, in a very seminal paper, very short but very important paper, um, observed the following. Uh, when you have a double object verb like show, it appears as if the first DP, C commands the second one. So Brianna showed Justin himself in the mirror. 
Justin can see command and bind himself. That shows that, uh, that Justin uh, does in fact um, have that kind of structural relationship with himself. But the reverse is not true. You cannot put an anaphore in the first position having it bound by the element in the second position. So Bri Brianna showed himself justed in the mirror is ungrammatical. This is not what the ternary branching structure predicts. The ternary branching structure predicts that the second sentence should be grammatical because the DPs symmetrically C command each other. So um, this should be just as good as the first sentence. What this shows us is that the first DP actually C commands the second one. In our tree structure that we had with ternary branching, that's not true. So um, uh, let's talk about another possible solution. This was the solution uh, proposed by um, the linguist Richard Larson. He proposed that there's actually an additional X-bar projection underneath the verb phrase that uh, provides a specifier from which the first object asymmetrically C commands the second one. What does that mean? It looks something like this. Don't worry about the actual content of the X for the moment. We're going to explore that in a second. But what we want to do is ensure there's a relationship where the first DP C commands the second one, but not vice versa. And that's possible if embedded underneath the verb phrase, there's another uh, phrasal structure with a specifier and a complement where the specifier is going to asymmetrically C command the complement. So this, um, this solves the barson lasnik problem because it predicts that we can have anaphores bound by um, the, the, the first object. Um, in the second position, but not vice versa. But what is this X thing? That's the question of the day.